You guys, we have so much fun recording these episodes. <laughs> we really do. We just had to like make ourselves stop laughing. I know you guys don't want to just hear us laughing and laughing and laughing. We try to right, get to the content. We want this to be valuable for you, but we have so Definitely. much fun together. <laughs> we just have so much fun. Um, so guys, we are on the mics today to talk about a very interesting question. Now, we really need you to listen up today, guys, because what we have to say, these steps we are going to give you, um, this is a real activity that you can immediately put in your study plans, guys. And it is not only going to improve your listening comprehension, but also your speech speaking because it's focused on pronunciation. Um, before Aubrey reads this question, cause it's such a great question. I just want to put something in your mind first, as you listen to this question. All right, guys, I need you to realize how connected speaking and listening are. Okay. Chances are If you cannot say a sound correctly, you also cannot hear the sound correctly. This is how integrated these two skills are. So put that in the back of your mind, file that away um, as context. And Aubrey, what is the question we're answering? Yes. So real quick, I want to share an example of that. If you Hmm. listen to the All Ears English episode, you heard this recently. I interviewed Sandra Royo. She's from Puerto Rico. And she gave a perfect example where for her, when she was learning English, she could not hear the difference between ch and sh, the ch and sh. So she would say it incorrectly because she couldn't hear it. Totally. And she was talking about the show Charles in Charge was this old show and she would say Charles in charge and people would point out to her. It was so hard because she couldn't hear that. Right. And once she was more aware of it, then she started hearing it, started being able to produce it. So that's an excellent example, right? Okay. So now I'm going to read the question. It's such a good question. In conversation with an English native speaker, I find it hard to immediately hear the past tense, especially when it is in the form of ED after a verb. And I usually forget to say ED when I'm telling a story. Mm -hmm. It simply doesn't come as easily and naturally as I would like when I have to think about the content and use correct grammar at the same time. In Mandarin, we don't add ED or change the form of a verb to indicate the tense change. I wonder if there is a way I can make improvements on this aspect. Thank you. Such a good question. For sure. Yeah. I mean, so this, this definitely is more of a pronunciation issue than a grammar issue because Cause like the basic grammar rule is in this person's head. You know what right. I mean? Like, you know, that regular past tense verbs get ED. Like this is a thing, you know, so why can't we hear it and use it? Um, and yeah, like, I understand that a lot of this goes back to one's first language because so many language do- languages don't conjugate verbs. Like we do, they just add an extra sound or word to indicate time, um, instead of changing the verb itself. So I get that that jump in, in time telling grammar would take some time to get used to. Exactly. Right. And if you aren't saying it correctly yourself, then you can't hear it when you're listening. And if you can't hear it when you're listening, you're not going to be producing it correctly. So it's just like you said, they're so connected. And when it comes to IELTS, you could make mistakes on both, right? When you're, when you're speaking on the speaking exam, you might be making mistakes when you're listening for the listening exam, you might write something and exclude the ED. Totally. Exactly. or, Or lots of other sounds, right? It's not just about ed depending on your first language there will be different sounds where you have this issue yeah so um let's just take this ed problem right um it could impact the grammar score uh when you're speaking and it could hurt your listening score because you're writing the verb wrong right Um, So it's the wrong answer. And if we think about other pronunciation issues that are not grammar related, the TH, right? There are so many minimal pairs with TH and S or TH and D, right? So for example, thing and sing, think and sink. And if you cannot say the TH correctly, you won't hear it correctly. Pronunciation score goes down on speaking, listening score goes down because you are writing the word incorrectly, right? Um, So yeah, I just wanted to reiterate for you guys how important this idea is. Did you say reiterate? (laughs) It sounded like- Reiterate. Iterate. I totally said that wrong. (laughs) I was going to let it 
go. And I'm like, Don't. hang on, because it's so funny. <laughs> we do this. Iterate. The natives sometimes will like say a sound incorrectly. <laughs> so again, don't be embarrassed. Like it happens, that's right? That's so awesome. I'm so happy I did that. <laughs> I um, that's what's known as a grammar slip. Uh, characteristic of what a native speaker might do. And you are allowed grammar slips at a band nine. It's actually in the scoring rubric because like Aubrey said, natives do it. do it all the time. All right, guys. So we have um, an activity for you today, some steps to follow. So take notes in order to improve pronunciation, maybe grammar and listening scores. So Aubrey, what can we do first? First of all, you need to learn the rules, right? And for some letters, for some sounds, there will be several rules. Like T is a good example. There are several different ways the T can sound. There's like a yeah. true T. T can make a glottal stop. Mm -hmm. T sometimes becomes TH or SH, like caution becomes mm. a SH when it's really T-I-O-N, right? So there'll be all these different rules for the letter T depending on the word. And once you know those rules, your brain can make these connections. You start recognizing them when you're reading them and when you're hearing them, when you're saying them. Our yeah. brains, adult brains, need those explanations, those rules to hook onto. Yeah, totally. Um, I compl We respect our adult students as adults. It doesn't matter what English level you are at. You are still an adult with an adult brain, right? Um, I really don't like it when non-natives get judged, like their intelligence gets judged because of their English level, right? Like that's, those two things are not connected. Um, so this is my point guys, like whenever we teach you something, it could be an IELTS strategy skill, could be vocabulary. We tell you why it's important and how you can use it, right? We give you context because as adult brains, you learn better when you know why you're learning something and you have an explanation as to why this is the right answer. So I just want to point out that that first rule is important. Um, you do need to do a little bit of research. So, you know, what, what happens in the mouth and the tongue to make this sound, right? Any, any of this sort of structure is important. Yeah, exactly. All right. So second, what can we do, Jessica, to <laughs> dive in? <laughs> it sounded like you were going to say it and then you threw it back to me. Um, all right, guys. So the next step after your brain is like, I get this. I know what's happening. Okay. Now it's time for me to do it. Um, then step two, get a page, a page of text. It could be from a novel. It could be a news article, or it could be a transcript from a podcast, like all ears English. So get a page of text and you need to circle all of these sounds you're focused on, but just do one sound at a time. So again, let's take the TH, right? Look at the whole document, circle all the THs, and then you read it out loud. Okay. That's step three, read it out loud, focusing on those specific sounds. Now, if you have a page of transcripts, that's even better because you could hear the natives saying it, and then you can mimic them while reading out loud. Um, so both of those things would be, would work perfectly. Yes. Nice. Okay. And then your next step, step four is to write out your answer. For example, to speaking part two, this, you're going to need two minutes worth of text here, but you want to focus on this grammar or a pronunciation rule. So for example, for the TH, every time you're writing a word, circle that, think about how you're going to pronounce it, say it out loud. Mm -hmm. And then your step five will be to read it out loud, record yourself. Are you always saying those sounds correctly? Are you making mistakes? If so, you're going to need to practice it, work on it some more. Exactly. Um, and in that step one, guys, if it is a pronunciation focus, right? Because the, the question was about grammar ED, but we're taking it more in the pronunciation direction. Um, there are so many great YouTube videos of pronunciation teachers showing you exactly what is happening with the teeth, the tongue, the throat, the lips, like what is happening to make this sound. Um, and so those are available, easy to find for free on YouTube. So that's a great place to start in step one. That's a good point, right? You're not on your own to hear it on a podcast and be like, yeah. how do I do this? Yes, there's so many resources online. Search, right? How do I make the TH sound? And you're yeah. going to get some really good videos watching a native show you. Then you can repeat. You can mimic their pronunciation. They'll tell you what you should be doing with your mouth. That's so helpful. Yeah. 
Totally. Awesome. All right, guys. So remember, if you want to take our free IELTS quiz, you totally can. We personally extend an invitation to you right now. Go to allearsenglish.com slash my score. It's a free quiz, guys. It just takes a few minutes and you get your estimated IELTS band score and prep material. So go to allearsenglish.com slash my score. All right. Awesome. Thanks, fun. Aubrey. Yeah. I'll see you next time, Jessica. Bye-bye. Bye.